Hey ladies, welcome to tonight's discussion all about monkey branching, pay to play and networking skills for black women. This is the channel for black women wealth builders, black women who are leveling up. And um, tonight's discussion should be pretty interesting. I got some interesting things to share with you. Want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the best monkey branchers that are out there, uh, somebody that everyone knows. Um, <laughs> that would be Kim Kardashian. We're going to dive just a little bit into um, her monkey branching. And the only reason I like to use her is because so many of us know who she is. It doesn't require a lot of explanation. We saw the monkey branching live. So um, we're just going to kind of go through that. We're also going to talk about Grant Cardone, who is another monkey brancher, some of the things that he has done and continues to do. We're also going to have a little bit of talk about Erica Williams, if you're familiar with her her on these YouTube streets and the monkey branching that she has done as well. Um, we're going to talk about the book Never Eat Alone, and I've got some things to share with you on that. Never Eat Alone, in my opinion, is the best book on networking. And if you want a monkey branch, you have to have a network. Uh, there was an interview that was done with the author that had a lot of gems in it. So we're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to give you uh, something that I learned many, many years ago with regards to how to engage people with networking. And that way you are able to turn uh, some of the relationships of the people that you're meeting into deeper relationships. So ladies, don't forget to give me a thumbs up as you are coming in. Thumbs up the video. Tell me hello. Good to see everybody here this evening. So let's talk a little bit, first of all, about this whole idea of monkey branching. Um, in order to be successful, in business, in career, in life, um, sometimes in your personal relationships, if you are marrying up preferably or marry, marrying social, socioeconomically uh, within what we want to do as, as Black women wealth builders, you are going to be looking at monkey branching. Hey, Selfish Love, good evening. Most of us, even if you grew up in a middle-class home like I did, you don't want to stay middle-class. You want to get to upper middle-class, you know? Uh, some of you grew up in poverty. You want to monkey branch up to the next level. You want to monkey branch up to middle-class or upper middle-class, et cetera. And these conversations are important for us because there is strategy. There is strategy to the level up. I'll tell you a story from many years ago when, now I'm pre-internet, I graduated from college in the, um, in 97, believe it or not, and went, got my first job, totally green, didn't know anything. My parents, although they were good parents, they really didn't have a lot of guidance for me with regards to how to navigate in the corporate world. And um, it was around this time of year, it was around Christmas time, and I had the boss from hell, just say. <laughs> if she ever hears this, oh well, I had the boss from hell. But um, the company that I was working with was having it's big annual Christmas party. And at the time I wasn't interested in going. Uh, she asked me, you know, are you going to the Christmas party? And I said, no, I was just like, no, you know, like, why would I go to the Christmas party? And she basically said to me, boss from hell, she said, yes, you are, you're going. And then she walked off and she never explained to me why I needed to go to the Christmas party. The reason I needed to go to the Christmas party is because people engage with you in social settings. People get to know you in social settings. People want to, um, want to learn more about you in social settings. And it's in those social settings where they decide if you're gonna get a promotion. 
it's in those social settings where they decide if they're going to let you into the inner circle. And some people may say, especially Black people, especially, um, well, some Black men do it, but, you know, Black women, since we're Black women uh, here, well, I don't want to be in the inner circle. I really don't care about being in the inner circle. The truth is that it is impossible. It is impossible to level up without the inner circle. Hold on, everybody. We've got a troll in here. Sorry, everybody. Um, so being able to understand monkey branching, whether you should pay to play, when you should pay to play, how to network, how to network properly in order for you to move from one level to the other in life is a skill. And it is a skill that we as wealth builders should embrace and we need to learn and we need to learn how to do it accurately. The stuff that I'm going to tell you tonight, if I had known these things in my 20s, I'd be a lot farther than I am today. I'm not doing too badly. Um, I happen to have a great network now, but I want to make sure that you get these lessons and get them sooner rather than later. So let's talk about the woman that I feel is uh, <laughs> the epitome of monkey branching, and that's the Kardashians. I want to talk about Kim Kardashian being the ultimate monkey brancher, but we cannot talk about Kim without talking about her mama, Kris Jenner Kardashian. So there was an expose done uh, on her and her net worth and things like that. And again, I'm not a fan of Kim or Chris or any of the Kardashian clan, but I feel like they're a great example of monkey branching because we don't have to go into huge explanations about who they are and what they do and how they did it. I can show you some pictures. We can have an overall conversation and you can take the lessons of what they have done in order to figure out how to level up and how to monkey branch yourself. So the story of Chris is that she lived in, I think it was San Diego or someplace like that, someplace in California. She came from a very modest means and she uh, ended up knowing early on that she wanted to be somebody. I don't think it was ever necessarily that she wanted to be famous, but she definitely wanted to be rich. And in those days, in order for her to get rich, she had to monkey branch. Uh, and there were two primary ways that you could monkey branch in Chris's day. That was either to be a flight attendant, preferably first class, or to be a nurse. And Chris, who was very beautiful back in the day, she's still very pretty, but uh, back in the day, very beautiful. She decided to become a flight attendant and she ended up snabbing this guy called Rob Kardashian. And of course, Rob Kardashian is the famous father of Kim and Chloe and the rest of them. And he also was um, OJ Simpson's either best friend or whatever. So uh, Chris monkey branched her way into the inner circle through marriage. She also taught her daughters, her famous daughters, how to do the same thing. Um, so then Chris got divorced. You know, I'm not dealing with all the cheating and all of that. I don't know about all that stuff. But got divorced, ended up marrying Bruce slash Caitlin. Um, so at the very beginning <laughs> of their marriage, she ended up... Um, she ended up, what do you call it, managing Bruce's career, managing his speaking career. And many of you may say, well, that's not necessarily a monkey branching situation. And I absolutely agree. But she did leverage, she did leverage her quote unquote star quality of power with her daughter and her then husband and the rest of the family uh, in order to monkey branch with Kim in order to build up 
um, their career, build up their, um, what do you call it? Their, oh, their reality TV career. Thanks guys for kind of chiming in there. She ended up opening up a children's store, clothing store with uh, daughter Courtney. This was back in the day. Yes, we know a lot of the controversy of the things that Chris did in order to get her uh, famous daughters on, in order to monkey branch them. But, you know, she did it. In 2007, of course, they monkey branched onto TV. So her monkey branching involved Ryan Seacrest, who was the executive producer of the TV show. At the time, Ryan Seacrest was known for American Idol. He was making really big waves with E! Television. That was a monkey branch for her and for the family as well. And then Jenner has personal projects, blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, it says down here that, oh, I want to talk about this. Then they ended up monkey branching over to Hulu. You can call it monkey branching if you want to. I think one of the big things they got from their Hulu deal was a lot of ownership, which, um, and a lot more say so than they even had on E. Um, and then ultimately now they are worth, or she's worth 230000 It says it over here somewhere in the article. So Kim did her own monkey branching as well, right? Kim monkey branched <laughs> from man to man, okay? Guy on the left is, of course, Ray J. We all know what happened with Ray J. We all hear the rumors about Ray J. I'm obviously not telling you to use this as a level up. I'm using it as an example of how the guy on the right comes into play. So Kim always knew where she wanted to be. She always knew she wanted to be an A-lister, but she had to start off on the D-list. And how does she get on the D-list? She monkey branched to Ray J. Then, you know, the TV show got more popular, blah, blah, blah. She was not able to get into A-list society until she monkey branched to who? To Kanye, right? We're not gonna talk any more about that, but yeah, she monkey branched to Kanye to go from the D-list. She was on the D-list and the C-list and the B-list. She could not penetrate the A-list without Kanye. Now, Kim wants to monkey branch into, quote unquote, um, the upper levels of society. I'm going to call it the Davos clan. The Davos clan are, if you're familiar with Davos, it's this place in Switzerland that people go in order to, the, the super, super rich go in order to discuss the world economy and investments and things like that. Her monkey branching into that starts off with the guy on the right. The guy on the right is named Josh Kushner. Josh Kushner, and I want to actually give props to a woman named April Butcher. Um, so I'm going to stop my, um, hey, becoming boss. Um, yeah, million, 230 million uh, is what she's worth. Did I say thousand? I'm sorry. <laughs> and hey, computer and coin. So um, we're talking about Kim. So she monkey branched to Josh Kushner. I want to give, um, what do you call it? I want to give credit to a woman named April Butcher because I don't want to sound like I know this stuff myself. Actually, I got it from April Butcher. April Butcher. She is a fellow YouTuber and she uh, did a, a, a live stream. She actually follows the Kardashians very, very closely and intently. And I was listening to her for a little bit um, as this whole Kanye thing unraveled. And she talked about the fact in the Fox interview that um, Kanye had mentioned in the Fox interview that Kim uh, had sold 11% or 10% of skims to a guy named Josh Kushner. And you may ask, well, who is Josh Kushner? Josh Kushner is the brother of Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner 
is Ivanka Trump's husband. Right? Okay. So why is Kim monkey branching to the Kushners? I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to go back to my presentation. Hold on. I just wanted to give April Butcher her, her props here because I wouldn't have known about this guy, Josh Kushner. Josh Kushner is a private equity guy. Josh and Jared Kushner owns a, a private equity firm. A couple of months ago, Kim mentioned that she was opening up a private equity firm. Kim wants to start navigating now in these circles with these super serious investors, private equity people, venture capital people. You may say, well, she, she could have been doing that for the past 10 years. Not at the level that a Josh Kushner and a Jared Kushner can get her into and, and have her taken seriously in those circles. Why am I talking about all of this? I'm talking about these things because Kim, lover or hater, is a great example of somebody who has a target and navigates in such a way that she is actually hitting her targets, like her or not. I'm not a fan of hers. I think the whole Balenciaga thing is super trashy. I think all the things she's done in order to get to where she is is super trashy. I think there's a way for you to monkey branch without being trashy. But again, I wanted to give us an example that we could all kind of say, okay, yeah, that's somebody that we could see that actually monkey branch, they paid the game, they played the game and, you know, we're able to see the fruits of that. The other thing is I not only called the session monkey branching, but I called it pay to play. One of the things that people talk about all the time with the Kardashian family are the numbers of blogs that they have on payroll. They have a lot of blogs on payroll. This is pay to play, ladies. Pay to play means that you are going to, at times, have to pay money in order to get into certain places, in order to be a part of certain things. Kim and um, her, her family uses the media in order to be able to push products, in order to be able to suppress certain things, you know, et cetera. Again, I'm not telling you to, um, to use people or entities in the wrong way, but I am saying watch what they do in a life lesson in how to monkey branch how to use pay to play in order to get where you want to be. So, hey, fine womanhood. Hey, God bless. Um, I think Kamala would be an interesting person to observe as well, even though she already had the degrees and credentials. You are absolutely right about Kamala Harris. She definitely monkey branched from uh, the mayor of San Francisco, I think, who was married. Again, I'm not suggesting you do this, but that's what she did, right? I think even before then, she probably monkey branched with the AKAs, you know, she monkey branched to um, to the, the mayor of San Francisco, and then she monkey branched to, I feel like her husband is even a monkey branching opportunity. So you're absolutely right with regards to that. So... I also wanted to talk a little bit about Grant Cardone, right? Because Kim K is not the only person that's monkey branching out here. Many of you know who Grant Cardone is. He is a very popular uh, social media influencer. He's a real estate investor. He is also a salesperson that teaches uh, sales training. That's how he got started. If anybody ever watches the 10X Growth Conference, if you've been watching it from uh, the beginning until now, part of what Grant is doing in front of our eyes is monkey branching. He was a pretty much nobody within sales when he first got started. 
And then throughout the years, he monkey branched by connecting with certain people. Some of those people he paid to be on his 10X Growth Conference stage, even though he says he doesn't pay anybody. I, I don't, well, I heard that he doesn't pay anybody or he said he doesn't pay anybody, but I don't believe that, right? Um, but he will pay people. He will pay mentors. He will pay to get into certain places, things like that. His whole goal is to monkey branch. And he, along with Elena, monkey branch their way to, I believe he's a billionaire, at least on paper, to billionaire status, right? Another person who is um, monkey branching in her own way is Erica Williams. If you're familiar with Erica Williams on YouTube, she is a uh, financial YouTuber. I like Erica Williams. So full disclosure, I've spoken with her several times. Uh, she knows who I am. We know who um, each other is. And even if you listen to Erica, she has monkey branched her way into rooms as well. She goes to specific conferences. She networks with specific people. She plays to get in specific masterminds in order to monkey branch her way into certain investments into certain knowledge that she passes along on the YouTube channel, which is part of the reason why I think she's got such a big following of people. Um, you know, and she, again, if you've been watching her for several years, she started off just showing, you know, different ways, different types of um, investments that she was in all the way up to the things you're seeing Erica do today. Grant is always on Clubhouse promoting his conferences. Grant is a promotion machine, but he also is monkey branching as well. He's got people, Grant is very interesting because I happened to go back to his YouTube channel a few weeks ago and he had Muhammad El Aryan on. And Muhammad El Aryan is um, a CNBC economic contributor. And I'm starting to see potentially, let me just say, with, with, with the addition of Muhammad El Aryan, that made me wonder if Grant is starting to monkey branch away from the hip hop artists and things like that and into more quote unquote Davos type individuals. So I want to see, I want to see where Grant ends up. God bless is saying, pay to play is truly real. I want to attend a legislature meeting that includes many business owners, even as costly. Okay, so let's talk about that. Is there any way for you to get in as a volunteer? Is there any way for you to get in by um, working with the committee? The event can be costly. Could you make more money in order to get in? Maybe thinking outside the box, but pay to play is real but you definitely want to be able to navigate. And I will say this as well. I had this in my, um, my notes, but I'll mention it now. Let's say that today, like, let's say we can go from level one to level 10. Level one is I'm living in abject poverty. Level 10 is I'm networking at Davos with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and those guys. And let's say today you're a level three and you want to get to a level seven. Sometimes we try to jump from level three to level seven, where maybe the monkey branching we need to do is from level three to level four or level three to level five. So God bless. I don't know. Uh, um, you saying here, yes, I pay for the ticket, but it hurt me. LOL. Well, then maybe asking if there is a way, like how you can, because I've done that as well, how you can take that, um, that opportunity and turn it into something that can help you in a, you know, a lot, a lot faster. Let's just say it like that. Um, if there's a business you have, if there's something you could do for, you know, um, for a, a freelance project, if anything like that, um, definitely kind of thinking outside of the box with that. Erica's great. Yeah, Melinda. I like Erica. Um, he's the king of free advertisement. 
<laughs> yes, everybody, please like the video and share the stream. Um, these event tickets are definitely getting high, especially Chamber of Commerce events. Yeah, I definitely, definitely understand that, um, which is why I also think sometimes uh, it's you may have to be selective or sometimes taking on a, um, a position within, for example, the chamber, if you know you want to go to all of the events, taking a position within the chamber, being a volunteer, you know, getting on the board, something like that can help to alleviate some of the costs that goes with these things. But the level up is real. The level up is real and the monkey branching is real, but the need to pay in one way or another in order to get into these networks, thinking about the fact that these networks can triple our income, triple our business income, triple our um, salaries, things like that. If we're looking again at Kim and we're looking at Erica and we're looking at uh, Grant, they're also looking at, hey, how is my monkey branching going to help me over the next 12 to 24 months? Melinda saying, check your chamber uh, of commerce on your city for volunteer and freelance work. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. And also, like I said, being on the board and things like that. Um, I think the event will be helpful just playfully complaining. Look, I get it. Like I'm like my coins are super tight right now, too. So I definitely get it. God bless. Um, you know, and and you're going to probably go to a lot of these events, but part of what I want to share with you tonight is something called the Relationship Networking Plan that uh, Keith Ferrazzi talks about in Never Eat Alone. Um, hey, Annie X, I'm a student and on weekends when I'm free, I work at box rooms at sports stadiums. It's a great way of networking with high network individuals. Good for you. I love that. So tonight's conversation, ladies, is going to be a little bit about how you are able to actually take those relationships and build a relationship action plan that actually helps you really be strategic about the monkey branching that you're doing. Okay. Um, let me just make sure I got all of my notes here. Oh, I want to say a couple of other things as well. Number one is don't just think about this in terms of your career or your business. Think about this in terms of your personal love relationships as well. I know some of you want to get married, you want to have children and family. Monkey branching for that is important as well. Many of you saw my com community posts, I think I did. No, it was a video that I did that I released earlier this week asking if women like us, we are wealth building Black women, should date men uh, making $40,000. Y'all know I don't tag stuff, uh, tag like the manosphere or anything like that in any of my posts or videos because I don't want that kind of attention over here. The men found us and they found us in droves saying, how dare we, you know, want men that make more than $40,000 a year? You know, <laughs> I could tell they didn't watch the video, but there was a whole bunch of them swarming around us um, saying that I don't know how to read the, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics and, you know, average is $40,000 and, you know, you ladies should be happy with that. They didn't call us ladies. <laughs> I'm here to say that if you want a monkey branch like Chris uh, Kardashian did, you are going to need to use these types of um, strategies as well in order to monkey branch. We're looking, if you grew up middle class, how do you get to upper middle class with a partner that is able to help you get, uh, get you there as well? So. Uh, becoming while Sia saying yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, look, girl, it was fine. Um, yeah, Annie, we are definitely happy that you are here. So you want to look at it with regards to like these lessons with regards to your career, with regards to your business, with regards to your personal relationships, getting married, having kids, making sure that your kids excel, you know, 
things like that, the different types of wealth building investments that you can get into. That's one of the big things that I'm doing. I'm looking to move from a level four to a level six with regards to the types of investments that I can qualify for and the types of investments that I'm invited to. You know, these are like apartment syndications. These are different types of investment clubs and groups that are doing big money. So that's one of the reasons why I'm shifting from my business plan writing business into this new business where I can make more money, have more money, get in the rooms with certain people that are doing multi million dollar real estate deals and things like that. So that's the monkey branching that I'm doing. And I suggest you ladies think about how you want to monkey branch as well, where you want to be, et cetera. So let's talk about Never Eat Alone. Never Eat Alone is by Keith Ferrazzi. And he has a very fascinating story. I'm going to read a couple of pages to you of his book. This is chapter one. The chapter is called Becoming a Member of the Club. Becoming a Member of the Club. Here's what he says. How on earth did I get here? I kept asking myself in those early days as an overwhelmed first year student at Harvard Business School. There wasn't a single accounting or finance class in my background. Looking around me, I saw ruthlessly focused young men and women who had undergraduate degrees in business. They'd gone on to crunch numbers or analyze spreadsheets in the finest firms on Wall Street. Most were from wealthy families and had pedigrees and legacies and Roman numerals in their names. Sure, I was intimidated. How was a guy like me from a working class family with a liberal arts degree and a couple of years of traditional manufacturing at a couple, sorry, and a couple of years at a traditional manufacturing company going to compete with purebred from McKinsey and Goldman Sachs, who, from my perspective, seemed as if they'd been computing business data in their cribs. It was a defining moment in my career and in my life. I was a country boy from southwestern Pennsylvania, raised in a small, hardworking still and cold town outside of Latrobe called Youngstown. Our rural, sorry, our region was so rural, you couldn't see ships from Mrs. Poland, Carol Poland. Oops, I'm sorry, everybody. I skipped the page. Let's try that again. Our region was so rural, you couldn't see another house from the porch of our modest home. My father worked in the local steel mill. On weekends, he would do construction. My mother cleaned homes of doctors and lawyers in the nearby town. My brother escaped small town life by the way of the army. My sister got married in high school and moved out when I was a toddler. At Harvard Business School, all the insecurities of my youth came rushing back. You see, although we didn't have much money, my mom and dad were set on giving me the kind of opportunities my brother and sister never got. My parents pushed me and sacrificed everything to get me the kind of education that only the well-to-do kids in our town could afford. The memories rushed back to those when my mother would pick me up in our beat-up Blue Nova at the bus stop of the private elementary school I had attended, while the other children ducked into limos and BMWs. I was teased mercilessly about our car and my polyester clothes and fake dock sliders reminded daily of my situation in life. My experience was a godsend in many ways, toughening my resolve and fueling my drive to succeed. It made clear to me there was a hard line between the haves and the have-nots. It made me angry to be poor. I felt excluded from what I saw as the old boys network. On the other hand, all those feelings pushed me to work harder than everyone around me. I'm still reading, ladies. Hard work, I reassured myself, was one of the ways I'd beaten the odds and gotten into Harvard Business School. But there was something else that separated me from the rest of my class and gave me an advantage. I seemed to have learned something long before I arrived in Cambridge that it seemed many of my peers had not. As a kid, I caddied at the local country club for the homeowners and their children living in the wealthy town next to mine. 
It made me think often and hard about those who succeed and those who don't. I made an observation in those days that would alter the way I viewed the world. Ladies, listen to this very carefully. Listen to this. During those long stretches on the links as I carried their bags, I watched how the people who reached professional heights unknown to my father and mother helped each other. They found one another jobs. They invested time and money in one another's ideas. They made sure their kids got help getting them into the best schools, got the right internships, and ultimately the best jobs. Did you all hear that? Put a one in the chat if you actually heard that. So these people, <laughs> these people, when he was basically outsider looking in, he's caddying for these people and he's asking, what are they doing? How were they so successful? Well, and he didn't come from a rich family. He said that my he said that his father, his mother didn't know these things, right? So he's looking at these rich people and he's discovered that they found one another jobs. They invested time and, and money into each other's ideas. They invested, oh, sorry, they made sure their kids got help getting into the best schools, got the right internships, and ultimately got the best jobs. Thanks for all the ones, ladies. What I'm saying to you is this, if you grew up like me, my parents didn't know the ins and outs of these things as well. When we talk about pay to play, one of the things that they said in here is they invested time and money in one another's ideas. That means if you're going to be a part of the inner circle, it can't just be take, take, take. There may be a time where somebody is raising money for a charity. Somebody is raising money um, for, you know, uh, their business, something like that. And for you to be in some of these inner circles, you may have to pay to play. You may have to give up something in order to get something, which is why I'm always encouraging you to think about your income as well and being able to save, having money for investing and things like that. Right. But with that, with being monkey branching and being in these um, in in these circles with these individuals, we should not be unemployed for long, if at all, right? We should get the best jobs. Our kids should be able to get into the best schools. Our kids should have the best tutors. Our kids should be able to get the right internships. We have to know how to play the game, ladies. So let me continue with reading his book here. Just a couple more paragraphs. He says here, before my eyes, I saw proof that, su that success breeds success. And indeed, the rich do get richer. Their web of friends and associates was the most potent club the people I caddied for had in their bags. Poverty, I realized, wasn't only a lack of financial resources, it was isolation from the kind of people that could help you make more of yourself. I came to believe that in some very specific ways, life, like golf, is a game, and that the people who know the rules and knows um, them well play it best and succeed. And the rule in life that has unprecedented power is that the individual who knows the right people for the right reasons and utilizes the power of these relationships can become a member of the club, whether he started out as a caddy or not. This realization came with some empowering implications. To achieve your goals in life, I realized it matters less how smart you are, how much innate talent you're born with, or even most eye-opening to me, where you came from and how much you started out with. Sure, all of these things are important, but they mean little if you don't understand one thing. You can't get there alone. In fact, you can't get very far at all. Ladies, it's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who knows you. Now, I will say one thing about this. Keith Razi is a white man. We're black women. 
So that does mean we need to be good at whatever we're doing, right? We can't rest on our laurels. We do have to be good at whatever we're doing. But when we had the conversation a couple of weeks ago about the young lady, Renicia, I think was her name, who said that she gives up on Black excellence, I think that we can, we, um, can take some of the focus on being excellent at the doing of our work, the doing of our career, and shift that focus into the who we know that can get us up the corporate ladder. Uh, any specific networking tips for introverts is so easy to want to stay home. Yeah, I have a couple of, so believe it or not, I'm a quasi introvert myself, just, you know, because I like to be home, right? Um, I think number one is to recognize that it's okay to be an introvert. Number two is to not overload your social calendar if you are an introvert. Sometimes it's better to have more meaningful conversations with people one-on-one -on -one or small lunches than to go to big events. For example, I don't like to go to big conferences with 5,000 people. I don't go to big conferences with 5,000 people. I just won't do it. I would go to um, a luncheon with 12 other people there. I would go to a conference with 120 people there and network and hang out. Um, another thing that I like to do as an introvert is, well, I'm only a quasi introvert. I won't say I'm a full one, is um, when I say I'm going someplace, I try to... Uh, talk with either the organizer or somebody like that in order to have the accountability that I'm actually going to show up, right? Because uh, it is, like you said, easy to stay at home. And if nobody's expecting you, even if you bought a ticket, you know, you may be like the day of like, oh, I really don't feel like going. Well, if you have a commitment to the organizer or, or your friend is meeting you there or something like that, um, you're less likely to squirm out of it. So uh, that's another tip. The final thing that I will say is to, I happen to like to read like current events in order to know what's happening. And I, um, because of the work that I've done in, my business plan writing, I happen to be good at small talk. So I happen to be good at asking, well, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And sometimes a person will say things that, you know, I'm an accountant, I'm a, you know, uh, an equipment manufacturer, whatever it is. And sometimes they'll say things personal, like, I'm a mom, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm really into my church and being able to say things like, well, tell me a little bit more about that and engage with people that way. Um, so I hope that some of those things and, and we'll do more sessions on networking for introverts. Um, that's a good point. Hold yourself accountable. Yeah, that's like one of the big things that I try to do. I know that there are people on YouTube that have very good videos about networking for introverts, they're probably a lot better. They probably have better tips than I do. Um, but I, I do say give yourself grace, especially with going to like super huge events. It's just, you know, not my thing. And I would say practice makes perfect as well. Just getting up, getting dressed, putting your makeup on, getting your hair done, going out. Once you get in the car and you're driving to the event, you're usually okay. You're usually okay. And then you may see a whole bunch of people in, you know, in, um, as you're networking in a room. Um, I try to go up to people that I already know and usually they're talking to people that I don't know. So that's a good way for me to um, to meet new people. The final thing is that, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, actually, right now in your relationship building action plan. 
there are certain people that you're going to want to meet because they're going to be able to help you with a specific part of your monkey branching. And understand that 99% of people who are going to these events are going there because they want to meet people anyway. They want to meet you. I've never, ever been to an event where, um, where people were rude to me or anything like that. So I think sometimes just as people, whether we're introverts or not, we think, oh, I don't want to bother that person or, oh, they've got a lot of people around them or, oh, um, you know, uh, I'm going to stay over here in the corner. People are at the event because they also want to meet people and they want to meet you too. You're welcome. Um, God bless is saying, I have a one-to-one -one meeting with another business owner. I am somewhat nervous. Oh, okay. God bless. I have something for you then. Give me, we're, we got to go over this video. And then afterwards, I'm going to, um, I'm going to share with you a hack that I have. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Let us then talk about um, Keith Ferrazzi. He actually did a, I'm going to pull it up here. He was interviewed by Lewis Howes. And I want to go through certain parts of his interview. This interview was a couple of years old, but there's still some really good nuggets in here. So we're going to take our time. We're going to go through a part of this interview here. Um, let me make sure that, yeah, the this is up here and that's on normal. Good. Okay. Everybody here is Keith Ferrazzi is on the right and Lewis House is on the left. Keith Ferrazzi is the guy that wrote the book, Never Eat Alone. That is the networking guru. Okay. Let's hear what he has to say. And if I can't find, I need to find a group of people in my life constantly that I'm learning from. Yeah. They're my mentors. Yeah. I don't, I don't try to rest too much uh, weight in any one individual. Our job is to create a set, a roadmap of individuals in our lives through whom we learn. Mm. Right. And, and I just started a new, I was just chatting with you about a second ago. I started a new high tech mobile enterprise software company. Yes. Right. I am so out of my element, <laughs> but you know, I'm raising money. I'm hiring individuals. I'm coming up with strategy. I'm building a sales force. I'm doing a lot of the stuff I know how to do. A lot of stuff I don't know how to do. I am finding mentors yeah. left and right. It's survival. You are. Yeah. So mentorship to me is about uh, relational learning. Mm. And if you think about it that way, then you, then you don't have a mentor. You have many mentors what around your learning roadmap. What is relational learning? What does that actually mean? Relational learning is just that you, you figure out, all right, what, what are my goals in life? Mm -hmm. You've got plenty of goals in your life. And we've talked about these at yeah. lunch. I remember that great conversation we had. And then what you do is you assign to your goals a relationship action plan. And a relationship action plan, as I teach in Never Eat Alone, had to do with who are the individuals that will open up opportunity mm -hmm. for me, right? That's great. But then the next question is, who are the individuals that will teach me the stuff I need to do to be successful once I get there and on my way to getting there? Wow. That's a distinct relationship map. Do you have the opportunity relationship map? Who's going to get me that job? Who's going to introduce me right. to the network that I need? Who's going to help me get clients? Opportunity network. Which is huge. And then the relational learning network is separate, right? And, and I think both are critical to be curated. Interesting. What's more important? Getting the foot in the door or? <clears throat> yes. Yes, right? I mean, because yeah. if, if, you, if you show up as an empty suit without the intellectual curiosity, without the inquisitive questions, which I learn from those the learning roadmap individuals, the relational individual uh, learning uh, roadmap, it, it, the answer is yes. Like, I mean, look, I, I guess I would rather get a shot at the job if I had to choose one or the other. The opportunity right, right. roadmap is critical. Uh, but I have to tell you, you'll never exceed, you'll never grow. And then the third set of relationships, which we've talked about, are the lifelines that actually go one step deeper. It's not about knowledge acquisition. It's about butt-kicking accountability. Mm -hmm. It's that small group of people those lifeline relationships, as I talk about, and who's got your back, that won't let you fail. Yeah. Right. So for us to achieve anything we want to achieve in our life, we got to have the opportunity, 
we got to have the the knowledge and the wisdom but then we have to have the chutzpah the push the drive the, the accountability yeah. that frankly most of us will fail ourselves and need somebody else for butt kicking yeah exactly. all right ladies so i love that as an introduction absolutely love this so he talked about a relationship roadmap a relationship roadmap. Remember before I had told you that I'm kind of looking at life as level one through level 10 with regards to our wealth building, right? Level one is abject poverty. Level 10 is Davos. You're meeting with Bill Gates and you're meeting with Jeff Bezos, not meeting with, you're, you are at the level of, <laughs> um, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, you know, those kinds of guys. And, you know, you could be anywhere from level one to level 10, right? He talks about the fact that you need a relationship roadmap in order to figure out where you want to be and the people you need in order to help you get there. Who are the, who are the people you need? I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know why, where these trolls are coming from. Um, we have uh, some craziness in the chat here. I'm sorry, everybody. Okay. So who are the people we need in order to be successful, right? So... He said that there are three groups of people. The first group of people are the people who can open up the doors for us. Have you ever noticed that there are some people who never, ever, 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 ever are unemployed? Have you ever noticed that there are some people who will start a business and they have millions of dollars given to them just because they started a business and they put something on you used to be able to put things on a napkin. Now you need to actually have a PowerPoint or something like that. Have you ever noticed that there are some people who, um, who, who always seem to um, have dates with rich men? <laughs> it could be another thing, right? These are the opportunities that he's talking about. The first group of people that you need in your life are the people with the opportunities. And I think a lot of us, when I heard him say these things and I really sat back and I thought about it, I think a lot of us garble things up where we think that people, one person is going to have all three of these items that we need. But he's right to say that there are some people who are just great at getting you in the door. And that's it. The second group of people that you need are the people who will teach you what you need to be successful. Who's going to teach me what I need to be successful? Sometimes the people are going to teach you the hard skills that you need. Let's say that you are an RN and you want to go up the next level. You want to um, do what computer at coin is doing with regards to healthcare tech. There are some people who are going to give you the hard skills that you need in order to do that job and do it well. Some people are going to give you the soft skills that you need in order to do that job and do it well. Some people like my crazy boss, if she had mentored me properly, gives you the politics that you need in order to do the job well. Yes, ladies, I know Sometimes black people, when I was in, when I was in my twenties, we don't want to play politics. I don't want to play this. I don't want to play that. Politics is what wins the game. Office politics does help you. It truly does help you. And there are people who are there to teach you the office politics that you need to be successful, where you need to be what skills you need to have when you get there, how to do those things, how to do them faster, quicker, smarter, et cetera. And then the third group of people are those lifelines or accountability partners that we need to be successful. Becoming Bossy is saying, he's so right. Most of us will fail ourselves and need somebody else to kick our butts. Yep, they certainly will. 
They certainly will. We need great accountability partners that we don't want to let down, right? Or he said lifelines as well. Sometimes you just need somebody to kind of, you know, when things aren't going right, to kind of pull you off the ledge and say, you know what, girl, you can do it. You can, you can actually do it. Let's take a, let's take a deep breath. Let's figure out step one, two, three, four, five, and let's get into action, right? Okay, let's listen to the next section here. Exactly. And the, the challenge I see with most people is that they don't have a, a support group or yeah. an accountability group or a mastermind or whatever you want to call it. So how does someone want first find that and figure out who the right people are that aren't going to suck the energy from them, but are also going to give and take it? Look, same it's time. trial and error. When, yeah. when I wrote Who's Got Your Back, there's a chapter in it uh, that talks about the long, slow dinner. And, you know, I think by the time we're done here in a short period of time, I want everybody who's watching us to have a relationship action plan. So, you know, as we're sitting here, scribble down your goals and next to every goal, start writing three to five people's names critical to achieving those mm, goals. Right. That's the opportunity group. Then I want you to ask yourself who to achieve my goal. Do I want to learn from? Write those names down. Wow. Then start imagining who are the people that I could trust around four core, there are four core characteristics of a lifeline relationship. And frankly, all relationships, but the, but the tightest ones have to have four things. Yeah. Number one is intimacy to the point of vulnerability. Mm. Can I tell you when, you know, I'm really feeling weak? Can I tell you when I'm up against the wall? Intimacy to the point of vulnerability. Second is generosity. Uh, do I really want to help you? And do you really want to help me? Do we, do we mm. care enough to help? Generosity, candor, will you tell me the truth, wow. right? Most intimate, critical relationships lie to each other and they shouldn't. Sure. Candor <laughs> in and conflict avoidance is horrible. Why do candor they lie to critical. each other? Because they just don't want to make each other feel bad. <laughs> Placation, or... they think that that's their role to make each other feel good. Oh. Um, look, I mean, I think a lot of it is the people don't realize that relationships need to be leaned on. The relationships aren't scarce, that they're... Uh, a lot of people are conflict avoidant out of psychological fear of abandonment. I mean, there's a lot of insecurities and fear that drive our relational behaviors. And the, 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 I have to say that conflict avoidance has to be one of the most erosive, hmm. erosive elements of organizational and human society, right? So the, the fourth is accountability, hmm. right? But candor and accountability together make a high performing relationship. What I would do is I would list three people that you have a strong enough relationship with now. You and I, frankly, you and I have a perfectly reasonable and strong enough relationship. I call it a level two relationship, okay. right? Maybe we're bordering on a three, but certainly two to three and three is a strong relationship. Yeah. If if you want to go to a lifeline, which is like a, in my world, a three plus, uh -huh. what you're going to do is you're going to go out and have a long, slow dinner. You're going to take your armor off. And you're going to say, look, here's what I want to do. Here's what I'm afraid of. And here's how I think I'm going to get there. What do you think? Mm. And see how the person responds. Do they respond with candor? Do they respond, respond with intimacy? Do they let their guards down? Do they respond with accountability? At the end of the, the dinner, are they saying to you, dude, let's talk next week because I think you should do these two or three things mm -hmm. and I'm going to hold you accountable for them, damn it. Now, if after the dinner, they don't call you the following week, then maybe they're not the right person to be your account. life. Yeah, right? Right, right. I know that was a very circuitous way to get yeah. to the answer your question. That's great. So first of all, thank you, Mokamami, who is in the building. Mokamami just did a great session on interviewing um, and interviewing styles and things like that. In fact, I have it up here to show you ladies, but I'm glad Mokamami is in the building. Um, and I'm sure that she definitely can relate to this. So a couple of things he said in this in this section. The first thing that he said is that there's a lot of trial and error as you are building these relationships. I love that because we tend to think that the first person that we uh, let our guard down with or have a, a candid discussion with is going to be the person that gets us to the top. That may not be the case. We may have a lot of people let us down in order to get to that final group of people that will truly help us monkey branch to the next level. 
And it may not be that those people are bad. They may just be busy. It may not be the season for them to help you, you know, things like that. Um, he talked about the relationship action plan. He talked about the fact that you want to have goals that you want to achieve. Really thinking about, ladies, where you want your life to be in, let's say, 12 to 36 months, right? I, I feel like that's a good, reasonable amount of time um, for us to achieve whatever goals we want to have. So where do you want to be in the next one to three years? And who are the people who are going to help you get there? Now, one of the things he didn't say is how to find those people. You may already know who the people are that you need to start developing a closer relationship with in order to monkey branch, in order to help you get there. You may know the people you need as well as the events you need to go to. Um, and then we've been talking about this. <laughs> um you may know you may need know the events you need to go to, but maybe you don't have the money to go to all the events. So maybe that's one of the things you need to figure out. But really kind of thinking, having a clear vision. I know we talked about Kim Kardashian before. You may not like her, but the woman had a clear vision of where she was going and how to leverage the people that she needed to leverage in order to monkey branch, right? So you can do the same thing with wealth building, with your career, with your business, with your relationships. Let's talk about relationships for a second. Let's say that, again, you want to get married, have children. Mocha Mommy talks all the time about the different types of sports, um, sporting events and things like that, that you can go to in order to monkey branch to meet men that are two to three levels above where you are today, right? Um, she tells you what to say when you, you see an emblem of a certain team, how to engage with the guy, things like that. Um, some of the monkey branching may be to work with the matchmaker or things like that. So again, these are networking skills for personal relationships, for professional relationships, things like that. Um, selfish love. Hey, I'm loving this life. Oh, thank you so much, selfish love. Uh, I want to create a vision board for 2023, just stuck on what I truly desire for my life. I can completely understand that becoming bossy. So sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, if I'm pushing too much, I kind of need to take a step back and just let things like at night um, kind of meditate. And oftentimes at three o'clock in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll kind of know like instinctively, you know, whatever the answer is. So that's worked for me in the past as well. Um, sometimes for you, it's looking at some of the things that other people are doing, thinking about all those areas of your life. And you may not be able to tackle every area right now. Maybe there's one specific area. It could be your money. It could be your career. It could be, again, an intimate relationship, you know, whatever it is, just kind of, maybe zeroing in on one thing versus a whole bunch of things. So uh, Selfish Love is saying, I agree. At this point, I'm just focusing on habits I want to develop and skills. I love it, ladies. Love it. So the other thing that Keith Ferrazzi said in here was about candor and accountability. Having people in your life who are going to call you, excuse my language, call you on your shit. They're going to be able to tell you, hey, you know, you should be doing better in life. They're going to tell you, you really need to go to that event, becoming bossy. I know you don't want to go. You're an introvert. You, you really need to go. Or you went, but you really didn't bring your A game when you were there. I know you can do better. Having a friend not friend, well, it could be a friend, but a mentor or an accountability partner who is candid with you. It hurts when you're hearing it, but it really pierces you. Sometimes, and I, I have I have an accountability partner who's like, Cherie, you're getting a little too big. You need to lose some weight. 
because they know who you are and they know what you represent. I'm not talking about, you know, you're a size 12 and you need to get into a size four. That's not what I'm saying. (laughs) I'm bigger than a size 12, right? Um, But they know like, no, Sheree, you're not, you're not at your best right now. What's going on? What do we need to change in order to get you back on track? That candor and that accountability, that lifeline, that person that can that you sit down with, you have what he said is have a long, slow dinner. And I'm going to show you again a hack during that long, slow dinner that you can follow that will really help you with that conversation. Yeah, the health conversations are tough. And the reason that I'm I'm focused on health is because I know that if I don't get certain aspects of my health under control, I happen to be very healthy right now, but if I don't get them under control, then it's going to cause me to have, you know, to take medication and things like that. And I don't like spending money. Not on stuff like that. Some of this medication is expensive. I'm sure Mocha Mommy can tell everybody. So, you know, it's important for me to get enough sleep, get up in the morning, make sure I go to the gym, eat a good, um, eat a good breakfast, all of those things, right? Uh, Selfish love, same new habits and pushing myself to get a a part-time job remote outside of YouTube. Good for you. Now, now becoming bossy, let's monkey branch with that part-time remote job as well. Instead of just taking something that is um, just because you need the money, really asking yourself, what's the monkey branching I can do? What's the monkey branching play that I can do with this remote job? Tuffers Love is saying, Lord knows I need to let the sugar go all the way. Look, me, me too, me too. I'm with you. Okay, let's go a little bit further with this, ladies. I want to go to 1312. Let's hear more of this. Achieve what you deserve to achieve. Yeah. And I don't want people to be mediocre. Yeah. I want them to have a shot like I did. Yeah. Um, Amen. But anyway, Amen yeah, for that. Exactly. <laughs> Now, when I hear you talk about this relationship action plan, some people might, I understand what you're getting to, but some people might think, well, is that a little cheesy or lame or is that fake that you're like reaching out to someone for an action plan to get something that you want? Okay. So so when my youngest boy came into our home, he's half Mexican, half African-American, identifies though as Mm African-American. So um, I wanted to make sure he had good role models uh, in the African-American community. I put together a relationship action plan around my boy, uh-huh. right? So I said, um, I need to get to know, I'm poor when I grew up, and he, but he's a different kind of poor. He's a different kind of poor, like homeless, street poor, yeah. right? Drug dealing kind of de- stuff that he's dealt with, you know, uh, kind of poor. Um, I reached out to people who had come from inner city, homeless, um, drug dealing, lifestyles who are now titans of their industries, nonprofits, et cetera. I reached out and I said, Hey, listen, I I need you at my home for dinner. Yeah. You know, and I need this relationship. I'm good. I've done my research on you. I want to introduce you to five people in my network that I think will be of service to you, your foundation, your business, your stuff, but come on over. Listen, at the end of the day, if we don't sync, that's all cool, but I want to give it a shot. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Why is that purposefulness? Mm right? Intentionality. Why is that fake? It ain't fake. I put it out there very clearly. Right. Right. So just because you're purposeful doesn't mean you're fake. It means it's important. Mm. So, I mean, I think that's what I want your audience to recognize is that, you know, again, I'll go back to the basic fundamentals. Relationships are going to be critical to your life. You don't manifest those relationships and work them strategically, proactively, authentically, uh, courageously. You will be mediocre. Yeah. Welcome to the world of mediocrity. Right. I don't want that for you. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So get off your ass, put your relationship action plans together, mm. let your damn guards down, 
accelerate relationships. You don't have much time. Yeah, Get on it. I like it. I'm sorry. I was on mute. Sorry. Um, everybody, don't forget to like the video as you are coming in as well. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. So I was saying that, yes, it's very thoughtful of him, but he's also leveraging his um, he's also leveraging the network he currently has in order to help his son. Because uh, as we were talking about monkey branching and networking skills for black women, you may think or you may not think that this could help your children, and it can. The reason I want to show this section of the video was to show that, that these relationships, this monkey branching, can help you in a lot of different ways, including helping your children, including helping your children see somebody who um, is where they are today. Let's say your, your child is dyslectic. Or let's say we're black, you know, we're black women, you're a single black mother, and you want to help your son find somebody who they can look up to, who could help them navigate, um, navigate the corporate world or something like that. You are able to use what he's saying in order to leverage these types of relationships. And everybody has something to offer as well. So um, he said, she's saying, yikes. Um, purposeful and intentionality needs to be my buzzwords for next year. Yeah. I think that's very important. We need to be intentional with what we're doing. I also don't believe we can do it all at one time. At least that is for me. I'm not trying to do it all at one time. I am focused on two things and two things alone. The first one is my new job. And the second one is getting a few of these pounds off. And that is it. I've spent the last six weeks letting go of everything else. You guys will, you ladies will only see me on Sundays here on YouTube. The rest of the time, I'm going to be super, super focused on what I'm doing. It is the only way that I can level, level up. But in the meantime, between now and year in, I am going to be sharing a lot of information with you ladies. So let's go to 1651. All right, ladies, let's see what else he has to say. Relationship I wanted, I had to make sure that I led with generosity. Wow. Now, once I showed up and I was a great kid and, and or a great young man or a great old guy like I am now, you know, then they will judge you based on whether or not they want to be with you. Now is when you go, start letting your guard down, be authentic, care. Yeah. So intimacy, generosity, candor, and accountability. Intimacy and generosity are the two accelerants of the relationship. You lead with generosity. You follow with care. And I actually work before I meet somebody to, to think about how will I like this person? Not will I like this person, but how will I? What elements of what they do do I admire? Right. Um, what do I know about them? Like how do I, how will I humanize them in my head so that I'm walking in, looking in their eyes, and I and, my, and the sparkle is already there. It's like I like this this dude or this gal. I already like him before I see him. Right. And if I psych myself into that, and I walk in with that way, with what I call five packets of generosity, meaning I've researched this individual and I've identified five things that I think I could do to be helpful. Which through oh. the dialogue, I will figure out whether those five ways I can be helpful. Then I'm like high five, and I've now earned the right to build an ongoing relationship, which now means follow up or fail, right. get back to them, continue to be generous, continue to stay on the radar screen, something that we could, all these are just chapters in the books. Sure. Um, pinging, making sure that I'm constantly staying up on the radar right screen, is. top of mind, yeah. you get it, yeah. Yeah, interesting, wow. Um, it's hard work, <laughs> it is. right? My question. Yeah, ladies, so look, it's hard work, it is possible. 
He says that generosity and intimacy are accelerants. So the first thing is you kind of you figure out if this is somebody you really want to open yourself up to, you really want to build a relationship with that is going to help you monkey branch. And then you understand that coming from a place of generosity is going to be important. I will say another thing as well. I don't know if he says it in any of the, the sections that I have for today, but one of the things I noticed with generosity is that sometimes the person that gives you the most is not necessarily the person that you're giving to the most. And he actually mentions it in the book about keeping score. If you were doing this tit for tat thing where I did something for you yesterday, so you should do something for me tomorrow. And then I'm going to do something for you next week. So you should do something for me three days uh, after that. You are never going to win. If you're keeping score, you're never going to win. That doesn't mean it should be so imbalanced that all you're doing is giving, 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 and not getting anything in return absolutely ever. That's not what I'm saying. And that's not what he talks about either. But he does talk about the fact that some in some there are some times in a relationship where you will give more. There are some times in a relationship where you will get more. And sometimes what you get... Um, it's not necessarily in quantity, but it's in quality. It can, it can, there could be a single door that's opened for you from this person that catapults you so much that even though they didn't give you 18 things like you gave them, but that one thing can catapult you. So let's talk a little bit more about how to keep up with people. Ladies, get your pencils for this one, your uh, paper, your favorite uh, note taking device, because this is a good one, good part of it. For you, what I'm thinking is like, I know your age. I know how long you've been doing this for. I'm almost 50. I, yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. I know you have dinners every Friday night. Every I've been Friday. to your house. I've hosted one and you're an incredible host for me to bring my, you know, friends. Great, good. We ought to do another one. I would love to. Year, yeah. yeah, I would love to. And how do you ping thousands of people is that, you know? high power influencers, well, great individuals who are all could be great friends to you. So, so first thing I will say is he, this guy has thousands of people. You don't have to have thousands. You could build a powerful network with 10 to 20 people in it. So don't let the thousands of people actually um, give you heart palpitations. So back in the day when I started, it was, you know, on spreadsheets, and me personally, once a year, there was an annual Thanksgiving card. You know, I, I don't know if I told you about this. I don't give Christmas cards anymore because it's such a, a glutted and cluttered yeah, time. It's too many. I, I create my own Thanksgiving cards. I like that. And so these days, a lot of people are giving Thanksgiving cards. So you could even do like a happy 4th of July card or a happy Women's Day card or something like that that um, shows some uh, individuality and originality. And we send Thanksgiving cards to the individuals we want to stay in touch with because it stands out. I, mean, I, I get CEOs of major corporations sending me an email saying, wow, thank you for that Thanksgiving card. I've never gotten a Thanksgiving card before, right? So um, that's an annual outreach, one-time ping, right? That's easy. Then what I do is people who are high-priority, critical individuals to me, um, I make sure that in the olden days, I would just research them, you know, just plug them into a... Uh, a web browser and search their name, their company, see what's going on. And just on a regular basis, once a month, I get five, 10 people, whatever it is. Look, yeah. now I got a system. Now you can use a Google alert. You can um, do certain things within LinkedIn in order to see their posts, things like that. Yeah. We help organizations do this. So, right. you know, many of the CEOs in the Fortune 100, my company, actually helps them manage the 1000 wow. most important people yeah. to the growth of their corporation. Sure. So I have an system, I have a team, I have individuals that are, are just constantly doing this. Sure. My whole marketing department is putting our strategy to work. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it takes, it takes money, it takes time today to do it at the scale that we do that. But yeah, but just start, start sure, you know, 25 names, 25 yeah. names. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm constantly going through my phone and just like texting people every once in a while, just yeah. saying a little audio note now, a that, little video. That's bathroom. That audio note thing really does help as well. Use of time right? at yeah. all, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> just 
sitting there hanging out, just you know, <laughs> scrolling through the high priority individuals, sending them a text. Exactly. And I, and I take a while in the bathroom because I eat a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ladies. So, look, I'm going to put this interview because I think it's a good one. I'm going to put it into um, the chat here. So you are able to watch the whole thing and I'm going to pin it as well for you. And yeah, you have a birthday card here. Yeah. If, if you're able to, if they're on Facebook or whatever, and you're able to figure out what their birthday is, a birthday card is really nice as well. Um, Becoming Wasi is saying, wow, great idea. I usually do the big holidays, but I do email happy birthday notes. A New Year's card is another great one. Absolutely, ladies. So this is where you get to be a little um, creative with regards to what you are doing. So the final thing that I want to show you is, let me remove this. Um, first thing I want to show you, actually, I want to show you two things. So Mokamami just did a session today called interview review. She just did this like a few hours ago. So I definitely suggest that you go to Mocha Mommy's channel and check this out because she talks about different people's interview styles. And um, she had a panel discussion and she talked about the different types of people that you need in your network as you're lever leveling up and how to interview them and how to leverage them for your success. So I definitely suggest that from Mokamami. And I'm going to, somebody had asked earlier today about, um, about being, um, about going to a party. That's what you had asked about, about going to a party and how you are able to, oh, come on. Okay, I'm sorry. I wanted to open this up for you, but whatever reason that doesn't seem to be working. So, this is a great system that I have for you. As you are getting to know people, uh, especially if you're sitting down having a drink with them, coffee, lunch, dinner, this is something from a place called BNI. BNI stands for Business Network International. It's the largest referral, used to be the largest referral organization, probably still is. The um, founder of the organization came up with this thing called the GAINS system. And you don't really necessarily do it as an interview. You can do it as an interview style, but you can also just kind of casually ask people these questions. And as you're asking them these questions, you're able to learn a lot more about them. So the G stands for goals. Goals are basically, you know, what, are they, what do they want in life? What are they trying to achieve? could be personally, could be professionally, could be something that's very important to them. But G, obviously the goals kind of helps you figure out what they want and how you're able to plug in and help them. A stands for accomplishments. What are the biggest things that they've done in their life? For some people, the biggest thing that they've done in their life is being a parent. They're very proud of their kids what their kids have accomplished. For some people, it is getting out of abject poverty and getting a great job, whatever that job is. For some people, it's the mission work that they've done in their church. So really kind of figuring out, asking them, you know, what's something that you've done that you're most proud of? What are the things you've done that you're the most proud of? What are their accomplishments? I stands for interest. Do they have an interest in, like Mokomami talks about sports? Do they have an interest in um, reading? What do they like to read? Do they have an interest in gardening? You know, um, 
whatever it is that they have an interest in that kind of gives them joy. It's the way that they re they uh, refresh. Some people love to snowboard and Aspen or, you know, uh, all sorts of things. N stands for networks. What kind of networks do they have? Who do they leverage? Some people really leverage their chamber of commerce. They, they're really into that group. Some people are Deltas, some people are AKA, some of their networks are church people. Um, some people uh, have a very strong family network as well. So who are their networks? Who are the groups of people that they tap into? These days, some people have very strong Facebook groups that they're a part of, or, you know, parent groups, et cetera. But you want to figure out who their networks are and ask them. The final thing is skills. What do they do very, very well? What do they do very, very well that they could basically do for free? You know, some people are great connectors. Some people are great at coding. Some people are great at um, building websites. You know, some people are great at interviewing people. Whatever it is that is, that is their skill, you want to... Um, figure out what that is as well. So during that life, um, that interview, sorry, not the interview, the long, slow dinner that you have with somebody where you're really trying to get a deep, intimate relationship with them. If you come away with the gains, you know, knowing what their gains are, their goals, accomplishments, interests, networks, and skills, you're going to be pretty far ahead with knowing about them, how you're able to help them, how they're able to help you, et cetera. So Erica's saying, great idea of thinking outside the box. Love it. Uh, yes, yeah, selfish love. I will, I don't want it like all, all over the place. So I will figure out a way to get it to you. Um, so yeah, the final thing that I want to show you is... I want to show you about failure. I want to show you about failure. Again, I'm going back to the Kardashians just because they're easy for us to talk about. You know, to do a lot of ex uh, explanations. I'm going to say that you are going to end up failing at some point in your level up. And I Googled uh, the Kardashians failed business ventures right? Because we see a lot of their successes, but they have had a lot of stuff that was failing or has failed in the past. Everything from their Sears Kardashian brand. I don't know if you all remember this. They have had a, um, a credit card. They, oh, the Tupac and Biggie, like they, yeah, they culturally appropriate everything. We know that, right? Um, but they've had a lot of things that are failures as well. And one of the big things I wanted to leave you with and impart on you is the fact that as you are monkey branching, as you are going to events, not every event is going to pan out for you. As you are speaking to people and, you're, and you are enacting your relationship plan, not every relationship is going to work for you. But if you stick in the game long enough and you connect with enough people, there is nothing that is going to stop you from monkey branching two, three, five levels ahead of where you are. There was a time when the Kardashians were a joke. They were the joke of Hollywood. They were assistants to people. And now they've truly leveled up and one day they could potentially, potentially be seen as <laughs> serious in the investment world. Actually, one of my favorite business podcasts, when Kim came out with her private equity firm, this guy has made like $100 million being an angel investor. And he was talking about how smart Kim was. She's so smart. She's so strategic. If she does this with the consumer brand, this guy made $100 million, $100 million. He's one of the, the well-known well um, angel investors and venture capitalists in, in, um, in the industry. 
10 years ago, he would have laughed at her. Oh, you found your notes. Oh, good. 10 years ago, he would have laughed at her. Now people in the business sector are taking her seriously. There are people who are laughing at you today because you didn't come from the right neighborhood, because you wear locks, because you, you know, have dark skin, because you're not seen as the symbol of beauty. Don't believe all that crap. Right? No matter what, we can play the game and we can't play to win. Suffers of is saying, I bought some of their clothes from Sears back in the day. <laughs> Was it any good? <laughs> or were they quality? <laughs> Erica, thank you so much, my dear. They know how to use their femininity to get what they want. They certainly do. They certainly do. They remember Chloe originally. She was everyone's favorite sister, but she was the ugly duckling. She, you know, she paid to play. She paid with regards to leveling up her looks. Kim paid <laughs> to level up her looks, you know? And I'm not saying you have to get plastic surgery and all of that, but, you know, a good, a good weave and the right makeup can go a long way. Being in the right rooms. One of the interesting things about Kim, there was a time when people would joke because she would show up to every single red carpet and Hollywood party without fail. When I was growing my mother's business back in the day, I belonged to the Chamber of Commerce and another networking group. I went to every single event that each organization had. I only chose two organizations. I went to every single event that they had. And guess what? It was an accounting company that we had. We grew that accounting company to mid six figures in record time, which for um, a bookkeeping firm really is what it was. It wasn't taxes or anything like that. We were doing exceptionally well. So sometimes you got to put that grit in in order to monkey branch. But the first thing you have to do, ladies, is create a plan of where you want to be, who's going to get you there. We talked about the three types of people that you need in your monkey branching plan. I definitely would suggest you go through, listen to this a couple more times, and take this holiday season in order to come up with the plan that is going to make you successful in 2023 and beyond. So again, everybody, don't forget to like the video on your way out, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you ladies next week. Take care.